These are indeed challenging times in Nigeria. With clashes and conflict on the rise, the number of displaced persons seeking refuge is on a steady increase. Support from individuals and organizations will go a long way in complementing government's efforts and easing the pains of the displaced. In continuation of our efforts at bringing relief to millions in Nigeria, the Weninit Foundation, headed by Dr. Chetachi Ekton, is set to bring smiles to the faces of dwellers in the Zonkwa local government area IDP camp, Kaduna State, Nigeria. Supported by Samson Diku, a legislator at the Kaduna State House of Assembly, Dr. Chetachi makes a quick stop at the palace of the traditional ruler of the host community. Dominic Gamboya Haya is the chief of this area. He holds the title of Aguatiap. He recounts the root causes of the conflict in the community and the many efforts at peace. When the flood comes, it's giving the land to settle. And more often than not, there is always a competition of who within the community will bring the flood and put on his own farmland. Because we benefit also from the cow dung. So that's where the competition arises. But a few years back, we realized that something strange was happening. They were destroying farmlands at will of other people, not their own. You know, you go to a farm, you discover that the Fulani have destroyed your land, the cattle have entered your farmland and have done havoc to it. Then you begin to wonder what is happening. Thereafter, we saw isolated killings. Somebody will go to his farm and then he will not come back. When he doesn't come back, they'll start looking for him. Then they will discover and the story will come that he was killed by Sosos and so Fulanima. What transpired on the 11th of June was perhaps a reaction to this cumulative isolated killings. Then, what we saw thereafter were organized attacks on villages. We cannot sit idle and allow this situation to continue. Let's, let's talk. So we invited the Fulani to know what is happening. Invited the Fulani, the Hausa, everybody else. They we had a summit. Well, during the summit, it was all agreed that it is better to pursue the peace than violence, to allow the violence to continue. So all the stakeholders agreed unanimously that peace be pursued. And uh, the stakeholders also agreed on one other thing, that there is need to forgive one another. This premises, which houses the messy IDP camp, is a school owned by a religious body. It was meant to be an emergency arrangement to temporarily accommodate a few displaced persons during one of the then frequent attacks. But today, it overflows its limits. We started with about 36 persons there before bringing them here. In less than an hour, the number increased to about 300 persons. Wow. And they told us a very good number of women and children were trekking from villages and bushes. Some could not even continue trekking because they spent all the night running. Mm -hmm. So we had to look for some trucks and buses to go into the bushes. Before the end of that day, on the 11th, we had over 900 persons in the camp here with only 70 mattresses that we borrowed. The following day, the number increased to 1,154 persons. After Bora attack, the number increased to 2,416. After Kuruma Masala attack, the number increased to 3,455 persons. And that's how the number keeps increasing. The stories of the displaced in communities around the area and beyond are both heartbreaking and wrenching. 
At the course of these attacks, 166 households were burned. And at the cost, 74 persons lost their lives beside the four that were killed. So we can say boldly that um, about 78 persons were killed. Two were drawn at the cost of running for their lives, like a mother who was backing her baby trying to cross the river and the baby was drawn. And another child of about 17 was drawn which was found after a week or two. Eleven communities were attacked in Zambantata. We can say without missing of words that um, over 6,000 over, which we are very much sure of, we have the records, that benefited from the camp here. Though their needs are many and the desire to return home, the When in Need Foundation is making efforts to help them see this camp as a temporary home away from home. This is my heart and this is my passion. This is the only thing right now for me to do. You know, when you have done so many things in your life, your children are grown, you have set some things up, what next, what else? Except to go and touch other people's lives and to encourage them to do better and to give them what it is that they don't have, regardless if it's just water, regardless if it's just bread, to give them and to touch their lives and to make sure that, you know, they keep on growing. And hopefully at the end, all this will stop and we will all learn how to live together as brothers and sisters. You can see mothers, they are like me. There's nothing different with them and me. They are mothers like me. And as you can see, they're carrying their children, nurturing their children. That's what mothers do. They nurture their children. So there is no difference. What I can tell them to do now is to keep on nurturing their children and keep on being content with what they have right now. And I'm praying that God will bless them and God will save them and God will provide safety for them. I'm already uh, mourning, uh, wishing the souls of the departed uh, beloved uh, ones to rest in peace. But uh, as it is, it gladdens my heart to find myself in their mix today to sympathize with them. The only thing I will say is thank you very much. And for your t-shirts, we need them. Thank you. thank you. A restock of medical supplies at the makeshift health center within the camp ends the visit of the Wenenid Foundation to the Zonkwa internally displaced persons camp in Kaduna State. A mother's love and care knows no color, language or boundary. Dr. Chetachi knows that only too well.